Hi everybody, here we are again, and it's time to make some slow gin. But first, we need to free up a jar. Now this is slow gin, it's been in the jar, on the fruit, since um, 6th of the 10th, 2016. So, almost three years in the jar. Equipment needed. Hopefully a jar that's big enough. Mayonnaise. Two pot noodle tubs. I've got a king pot and a standard. You can use two standards. Uh, with the bottoms cut out. Just use a sharp knife. You've got a, a ledge quite conveniently that you can just slice around carefully. And two pieces kitchen roll. There may be better filter mediums out there but I've got kitchen roll, it's to hand and it fits. So you put the two pieces of kitchen roll in between the two pot noodle tubs, put the pot noodle tub on top of the jar, pour it in. Now I used to do similar using a funnel. This is the first time I'm going to try this method out, but the funnel I found it only had a very small filter area and that got blocked within five seconds and then it was a steady drip, drip, drip after that. So we'll see if this speeds the process up. Should have perhaps taken the label off. As if by magic Label's gone. Right. So we'll just pop the jar. It's just the spring tension taking the lid off. Smelling good. Right. You don't want to go higher than the filter medium, otherwise it mess. It's not nice, but that is looking pretty good. And it's running through quite quick. So that's just a case now of keep topping it up. Right, we'll get back to you after this is done. Right, that's just about done. Jar was just big enough. Um, the fruit is all in there. Now, I'm not going to bother cleaning the jar out because it's had slow gin in it. I'm going to wipe the top of the jar and wipe the inside of the seal. Just with a piece of kitchen roll, that'll be good enough. Now, the recipe calls up, when we can find it, um, I think, oh, well, yeah, I forgot, I'll just run a sample off. Just have a bit of a taste. It's nice. It's got a slight tightness from the slows. The almond flavour from the almond extract. And the, uh, the sweetness from the, from the sugar that goes in. Right, yeah, so anyway. The recipe says Half fill a one kilo clean preserving jar. It says with a screw on lid. I ain't got one with a screw on lid, I've got one with a flip top lid. Um, with pricked clean slows, right. Pricking slows is a pain in the, eye, a pain in the neck. 
I've got 325 grams of slurs. I've got a chopping board with a piece of kitchen roll. And I'll just show you some of the slurs in a second. They vary in size. That's probably about the smallest. That's about the biggest. They came from different bushes in different, slightly different areas. Right, Ooh. you want to not chuck them all over the place, for starters. Um, but get rid of any of the stalks that are still on. side. Now the freezing process is supposed to split them ever so slightly but if you get a cheese grater with the finest side which has the star roughy bits on the outside you can just I'll try pointing you, pointing you down a little bit so you can see this so with the spiky side down, just roll it over the slows, pressing down, and doesn't need to be much. You can do them by hand as well, and it just pricks the skins. That's all you're bothered about. It's pointless having the fruit without the skins pricked because they won't release juices so that is probably the easiest way actually just get a handful roll them round a couple more stalks there because that way it also gets rid of some of the imperfections of different sizes of fruit. So these have come straight out of the freezer, rock hard and cold, as you can see. Unfortunately I'm grating them a little bit, perhaps overdoing it. That's probably all it needs. Not much pressure at all, just to a roll round right that's the slows all pricked and in the jar so 125 grams of sugar straight in on top and then cheap gin I've used expensive gin and cheap gin and by the time you've got the almond extract in and you've got the flavour coming from the slows there's no difference so you might as well save yourself a couple of quid and use cheap gin so this is 70 centilitres of 37.5% alcohol by volume By the time we've got it nearly full, and I think possibly by the time the sugar dissolves, we might get most of that in. So just shake it up until the sugar dissolves. As you can see, it's already getting a pink tinge to it. That's the slows doing the thing. Now you don't add the almonds to extract straight away. I'll put the recipe down in the comments. Um, so you need to shake the dar jar daily until the sugar is dissolved and the liquid has taken on a dark colour. 
only a light colour and it's not dissolved yet, is isn't the sugar. Doesn't help, it just slows them. It's not frozen everything but certainly dropped the temperature so the sugar is not going to dissolve very well. Um, 10 ml of almond extract can be added after two weeks which is what I did with that one and then left it for three years. Uh, right so you leave the slows in the jar for two months in all shaking up fairly often. When the gin is to be bottled preferably in half size liqueur bottles the liquid must be run through fine linen or a filter to ensure all particles which would otherwise mar the clarity are kept from the bottle. Well, that's pretty much that. That is pretty much crystal clear as far as I can see. And that's all there is to it. Um, I'm even going to be able to get some more gin in at this point. As you can see, the liquid's already already dropped somewhat. So carefully open the lid a little bit. Just. The whole lot in. So that's another 70 centimeters, approximately thereabouts, of slow gin. That's uh, it's going to take two months. That one may be ready for Christmas. That one certainly is. Right, like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Cheers. Bye.